Smarter than a beaver and as heroic as Schwarzenegger, Naru from Prey has plenty of amazing moments, but which ones are the best and bravest? Right away in the first five minutes of Prey, we're given a telling glimpse into the kind of character Naru will prove herself to be. At the start of the movie, Naru's trusty dog Sari gets her tail stuck in a bear trap. Not only does this foreshadow later scenes in which bear traps will appear in much more dire circumstances, it also says a lot about Naru without any dialogue at all. By saving her dog, the first thing we get to know about Naru is her compassion and her utter fearlessness when a loved one is hurt. Despite her struggles with them, she values her family and will protect them at all costs. However, this isn't all there is to the movie's young Comanche hero. She is, above all, incredibly driven to prove herself as a hunter, despite the gender norms of her tribe. This drive will go on to inspire her actions throughout Prey. Why do you want to hunt? Because you all think that I can't. Director Dan Trachtenberg and his crew clearly recognized their obligation to bring some sweet new gadgets for the Predator to use, and Prey delivers spectacularly on this front. However, one of the coolest pieces of tech in the film is actually developed by Naru. Early on into hunting the alien, she ties a rope to her hatchet in order to be able to throw and retrieve the weapon quickly. Trachtenberg revealed during an interview with ComicBook.com that he drew inspiration from the 2018 God of War video game for this rope axe that allows Naru to pull off some stylish kills without ever losing her trusty weapon. It goes on to pay off with a crucial role in the movie, particularly in the scene when Naru first stumbles into the quicksand swamp and finds herself sinking with seemingly little hope of escape. The the only way out is to use the rope axe to latch onto a downed tree and pull herself up. This moment highlights Naru's resourcefulness and her ability to think on her feet, a unique form of bravery that will prove to be important later on. After attacking the Comanche hunting party in the bloody scene prior, the Predator stalks Naru and Itse into the tall grass clearing near the camp. Hiding out in the grass, Itse, an overconfident hunter in the Comanche tribe, spots the Predator and prepares his bow, thinking that he and Naru have the upper hand. No, he has us. Naru saves Itse from being shot, but as the two run away, Itse is caught by the predator and dies in one of the most brutal deaths Prey has to offer. This moment illustrates that although she hasn't gotten the chance to prove herself, Naru truly is a skilled hunter who uses her instincts to assess any kind of situation. She has the wisdom to recognize that choosing what keeps you alive in a long battle of attrition with a foe like the predator is always the correct choice. After the Predator's assault on the French trapper's camp, Naru returns to retrieve Sari, but she's surprised to find that one of the men still clings to life. The survivor turns out to be the group's translator, Raphael. He begs Naru to heal him before he bleeds out. However, taking advantage of her position of power, she will only do it if Raphael teaches her how to use his flintlock pistol. Barely clinging to life, the translator has no choice but to agree to her terms. After demonstrating how it works, he gives her the flintlock and Naru gives him medicinal herbs to treat his bleeding wound. After she uses the herbs on Raphael, the predator returns, allowing Naru to discover a hidden property of her medicine. The predator can't see Raphael due to the medicine reducing his body heat, and that's when Naru realizes that its vision is based on heat signal. Signatures. This moment is, of course, a big reference to the original Predator, echoing the scene in which Arnold Schwarzenegger's Dutch discovers that the Predator can't see him when he's covered in mud. As sharp as she may be, Naru really rides the line between being brave and being an idiot when she decides to leave the camp without telling anyone where she's headed. In pursuit of the Predator, Naru is getting in way over her head. Ultimately, though, this proves to be an act of bravery instead of foolishness, and ending up as a real turning point in prey. Naru needs to embark on her Kutthamia, a rite of passage that all hunters must undergo in order to prove themselves to the tribe. The details of this ritual are important, since they require the hunter to hunt an animal that can and also hunt them, a predator. Naru realizes before everyone else that the alien interloper is a hunter, and she accepts his arrival as a sign it's her time to be tested. The moment she decides to go out on her own without anyone's help, Naru commits to making this her kathamia, and that drive to prove herself to everyone inspires her for the rest of the movie. At the end of the movie, Naru gets to complete her arc in a triumphant finale. As she returns from the hunt victorious, she comes back to the camp covered in neon green predator blood with the head of her prey held in her hands. It's the most empowering moment Naru gets in the whole movie, bringing her character full circle. As the community gathers around her, she tosses the head at the feet of the tribe's leader to accept her rightful place as a Comanche warrior. This isn't merely Naru coming back from her Kutthamia, regularly a cause for celebration, but her returning as the savior of her tribe. 
Having killed the creature that took her brother and most of the male hunters, Naru has made her way to the top of the food chain in a short matter of time. With most of the hunters dead, Naru remains the singular defense the tribe has. After they're both independently captured by the French trappers, Naru and Tabe are tied up to a tree together and used as bait for the predator. But since the predator only hunts humans and animals who pose a threat to it, it ignores the captives and goes straight for the armed trappers who are waiting in the wings to attack. Amid the chaos, Naru thinks on her feet to figure out how to free herself and Tabe from their ropes. Upon seeing the bear trap on the ground near their restraints, Naru figures out how she can use it to cut their ropes. Trachtenberg uses this opportunity to trick the viewer, as Naru begins telling Tabe a story about how a beaver will escape from traps by chewing its own leg off. Tabe begins to panic, thinking his sister is about to sacrifice her limb for their freedom. But as we've learned, Naru always thinks past the obvious answer to find a better one. Naru, stop! <laughs> I'm smarter than a beaver. One of the most brutal moments in Prey doesn't even need a predator around to set off a flurry of violence. Instead, in a moment showing the parallels between our young hero and the movie's young predator, Naru is the instigator of this assault. When sneaking up on the trapper camp, she sees that they have captured Sari and intend to harm him. When she springs into action, Naru is quick and deadly. Using her assailant's weapons against them, as well as her own rope axe, she swiftly puts an end to the remaining trappers. It's the moment that shows the most violent side of her, but it is crucial to proving that she's ready to take on the predator. Only now that as she matches the efficiency, bravery, and brutality of her prey, can she understand how to take it down. According to The Escapist, one of the elements of the original Predator that Dan Trachtenberg picked up and amplified in Prey is its commentary on colonialism. The anti-colonial themes are summed up in the antagonistic relationship between the Comanche and the French trappers. The movie becomes as much about Naru facing off against them as it does about her hunt for the Predator. In the end, the final trapper's fate is the most brutal of all of them. But the elaborate plan that Naru uses to kill two birds with one stone shines as one of her bravest moments. You can't see, but I'm killing you. After we see Naru sneaking up on the trapper, we see that she has tied him up in an elaborate setup to lure the predator out. She cut off his leg below the knee, leading him in order to attract the alien while hiding herself to its gaze using the medicinal herbs. Needless to say, it's incredibly dangerous to attract a predator to you, but this is the type of bravery Naru needs as a hunter to complete her rite of passage. At the end of Prey, Naru gets to put her bravery to the test in one final face-off with the Predator. After luring her prey into the Frenchman baited trap, Naru begins to use her wits and tools to prove herself as the true Predator. The first and most important part of the plan is to shoot the Predator point-blank in the head. Not only does this strategy inflict a major head wound to her foe, but it ends up being crucial to how the fight plays out. When Naru shoots the Predator with the flintlock, his mask flies off. Earlier, Naru had observed that this mask controls the targeting on the Predator's spear gun. She knows he is weaker without it, so she cleverly uses the element of surprise to seriously handicap her enemy. As you watch Prey, it becomes clear that many moments of Naru's final fight have been plotted out in advance, but one of the best scenes in the sequence comes when she's forced to improvise. Near the swamp trap, Naru is forced between two rocks by the Predator, with its shield coming down slowly, threatening to decapitate her. With the Predator bearing down on her, Naru grabs a hold of the mandible horn coming out from its mouth area. She uses it to stab the Predator in the face, and takes advantage of the moment when the beast cries out in pain to flee. It's a small beat in the middle of this awesome fight, but it stands out due to its sheer brutality. The elaborate and ingenious trap that Naru sets up to finally take down the Predator is definitely the coolest moment in Prey. The film keeps you on your toes throughout the entire climactic battle, only to reveal at the moment of the final kill that Naru has had everything in the bag the whole time. From the start of the sequence, when she's hunting the trapper, Naru has been setting her plan into motion. Immediately after she took the shot, she grabbed the mask so she could later put it in its strategic place in the tree near the swamp. When she finally lures the predator into the swamp, she has the mask's targeting lasers aimed right at it. When it attempts to fire its spears at Naru, the projectiles miss and hone in on the predator instead, killing it immediately. In her victorious moment, Naru reminds us that killing the predator was never about firepower. It was about embracing the traits of a good hunter. Patience, cunning, and bravery all help Naru defeat the predator with its own equipment. 